Sweet. Hey, today we have Samuel Beckson. He's the new president of the American Institute of Architects, Minnesota, and is founder and CEO of Full Circle Indigenous Planning and Design, LLC. Hey, Sam, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, first, let's start out. Just tell me how you got into this industry. Uh, so, uh, uh, again, my name is Sam Olbeckson. I'm, I'm an enrolled member of the White Earth Nation of Ojibwe. And why I bring that up is I grew up in a, a neighborhood in Minneapolis that's um, a Native American neighborhood. It's an urban indigenous community. My family is uh, from both the Leech Lake Reservation in northern Minnesota and the White Earth Reservation. And my family got to Minneapolis um, uh, essentially by promises of, uh, of jobs. Uh, a lot of the uh, policies of the U.S. government were about uh, assimilation and about um, ending the reservation system. And so they were trying to get a lot of people. And so my grand father and, and, and others came down to Minneapolis and there was a, a large Native American community um, that was uh, brought there. And those jobs really weren't there. They were just more of a, an intent to uh, kind of get people off the reservations. Um, but the community formed, uh, I was born um, essentially living on Franklin Avenue, which is now part of the American Indian Cultural Corridor. And when I was about four or five, I watched the Minneapolis American Indian Center, uh, the first version of that being built. And I knew that my uh, uh, uncle, a family member, was one of the uh, uh, workers on the building. And I guess he was a roofer. And, and when I'd drive by in the bus with my mom, she would point and say, hey, your, your uncle's building that building. And so I think that was one of the first um, instances where I was exposed to the idea of, you know, you can build something, you can build a building and it can start to transform uh, a neighborhood and it can and it can be a place where community can happen. And of course, at four, five, six, and in my early years, I didn't really understand that from a, uh, a design. But I, th I think that's probably where it all uh, sunk into me that, hey, you can actually do something. And uh, and just the fact of the kind of the, the poverty in, in the neighborhood and the uh, all the different living conditions, social conditions that really need the type of work that architects, planners, and other designers do to help uh, strengthen community is that that stuff needs to happen. Uh, and having that firsthand experience is, um, is likely why I'm doing what I am today. Yeah, that's awesome. Maybe you could speak to some of your experience. You've done work with Cunningham. You have your own firm. Could you tell me a bit about kind of your portfolio of work? Yeah, I've, I've worked with uh, a number of different firms. Uh, when I first graduated college, I actually worked in construction for a couple of years. I felt that that was important for me to get some uh, uh, firsthand field experience. Uh, and so um, I did that for a number of years, then came and worked in Minneapolis, where I'm from, uh, a couple of firms, Architectural Alliance, and uh, went to grad school, worked in Boston at a firm called Elkis Manfredi, came back, worked at a firm called MSNR, Cunningham, and then I uh, decided and realized that I could serve tribal communities um, in a much more intimate and thoughtful way by having my own business that focuses pretty much exclusively on um projects for tribal communities, whether they're nonprofits in the city, tribal uh, um, reservations. Uh, and I work uh, across the country, everywhere right now from Southern California to Alaska to, uh, to Michigan, uh, sort of all over the place. But it, it really gives me a chance to bring my experiences uh, on a wider range of projects to tribal communities to help them uh, rethink and transform and, uh, and help in their efforts to build thriving communities for their people. Yeah, can you tell me about what some of that work looks like? You've, you've helped over 140 tribal communities with uh, like reservation master planning. What does what is, what is your work look like when working with tribal communities? Yeah, when I work with tribal communities, I, um, I, I do a number of things. Um, and my, my professional life kind of transcends just maybe what a typical definition of what an architect does. Uh, I have an architecture degree and then my master's was in urban design. And so our architecture is generally about a building or a number of buildings and urban design is about the relationship between those buildings. And I've taken that to another level by really focusing on the community building aspects of this from, again, from a, a economic development to a cultural revitalization development. So how either in an urban native community or in a reservation community, how are the buildings and communities arranged so that 
community can happen. If you spread things too far apart, people don't have the opportunity to interact. You're forcing a car culture uh, uh, on people. Uh, so different types of development that, that may be uh, denser, that maybe have mixed use um, can help a community uh, be more efficient. And actually, you know, you go to the grocery store and you go to the gas station and you see your cultural facility, you see your school, you can walk, uh, you get to know your neighbors, you get to know your community. And I think that's one of the first things uh, that helps communities be strong is just knowing each other and uh, practicing culture and, 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 and creating economic opportunities. And, you know, housing is such a fundamental uh, measure of the health of the community. So those are the types of projects that I really focus on is the ones that can uh, help advance uh, tribal communities. Yeah, that's cool. I once heard that people look back so fondly on their university experience because it was the last time they were in a truly walkable community. Um, could you speak more to some like examples of, of using design or architecture to, to build that community? Are there, are there things that come to mind of, of stuff that you've done? Yeah, and again, from a standpoint of uh, urban design, and that you know, urban can be applied to reservations and rural too. But it's really about how do you create a system of infrastructure that uh, includes roads and even utilities, and and how do you preserve uh, green space, open space, um, revitalize sometimes polluted areas, waterways, uh, streams, uh, and then think about them in relationship to uh, the population, where do people live and where do people go to work? And if we can make a, an arrangement of those things in a way that starts to um, create efficiencies that allows communities to uh, have those walkable neighborhoods so that um, so that they're not um, you know, driving for hours to go to a clinic, to go back to school, to um, um, to have recreational opportunities. All these things are really important in, in establishing um, a way of life. And I try to do it from a cultural perspective. So I'm doing master planning projects right now uh, from anywhere from in um, Northern Minnesota to urban Minneapolis to Tacoma, Washington, California, and, uh, and Alaska. And each of them has a different tribe. They're each different communities. They have different landscapes. They have different cultures. And um, I was, I've always been taught by elders that culture emerges from the landscape. So the, the materials, the topography, the water, or the lack of water uh, really shapes how you live your life as a community and as families. And taking those cues and the, that cultural understanding from each community um, helps to give a sense of authentic identity to not only the community design in general, but to each individual building. So there's different material traditions, there's different uh, visual and aesthetic and, and, and artistic ways of thinking about things. So all those things impact how we uh, bring a project to life at any scale. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, what opportunities do you see now or, or how do you hope to kind of approach your role as president of AIA Minnesota? I'm recently newly the, the uh, president of AA Minnesota, and I've served on the board before. I'm actually on a number of different boards, and I, I think I, I view my role more uh, as uh, service leadership, that I want to support the staff. It's a great staff. They're doing a lot of great initiatives. They're working with uh, members of our design community on many different uh committees and, and initiatives, anywhere from equity to social justice to, um, you know, sustainability to you know, economic development, and then also just doing really cool, beautiful buildings. Um, but how can I support um, those efforts by uh, making an awareness uh, of different ways of thinking about design? Again, I formed Full Circle Indigenous Planning and Design as sort of a, um, not an anti-establishment type of firm, but it really tries to think of uh, uh, the way I, I practice uh, just differently. That, um, and going back to what I was talking about earlier, I'm, I'm asked often to be at parts of design that architects typically uh, aren't always asked to be at. So from when a 
organization just has an idea, I think I may want a building, I may want a space, uh, I can help them uh, in that early, early visioning process. I'm in a lot of capital campaigns where I help with fundraising. Um, and having the experience I've had, it has given me a lot of insight into you know, how, to, how to do things more efficiently or right at the beginning so that there's more chance of uh, fundraising success at the end. And then just being, being a voice for oftentimes many people who don't have that voice. And I think that puts me in an interesting position to maybe make an impact on the profession that, um, that we have many different responsibilities to our community that are beyond just ourselves or our family or just our firm, but that if we work uh, together to create uh, environments that um, uh, lift us all up, I think that's, that's a way of thinking about design that uh, is important to me. And then um, supporting uh, my colleagues. I work with a, a lot of different architects um, and, and different firms as a practice. I'm a small practice, so a lot of times on my larger projects, I team with other different firms. And I, I, I like to team with people who have the same type of um, uh, values and mission-driven efforts that I do. So I, I see my role as a president to, um, again, serve and to provide maybe a different way of thinking about our role as architects in the design world. Yeah, that's great. Are you seeing the industry think more about some of those things you mentioned about uh, cultural expression and community building? Is that is that growing as a, as a focus or, or a trend? Yeah, I, I think that is in many ways inevitable because the people we're designing for, the communities that we're designing for, uh, they're changing. And um, our profession sometimes lead, leads in those efforts and sometimes we lag, but in general, uh, design is about reflecting a time and a place. Every, every building, every community, every organization has a different story to tell. And, uh, and sometimes those stories, when they become dialogues with each other, tell a, a greater story uh, of a community. And the uh, AA Minnesota has great leadership that has been driving some of these national initiatives on equity and about thinking about uh, different things. Um, Mary Margaret Zindrin is our executive director and they have a wonderful staff and really taking um, the lead in some of these efforts and, and how we rethink the world. And, you know, I grew up mostly and live in Minneapolis and practice here. And when George Floyd was murdered, I even had a building burned down in the uprising that ensued after that. Um, and I think that whole movement needs to still be a call to action, that the world is changing, the status quo of practice and how the world works needs to be questioned and challenged and, and, and really thought from a perspective of, you know, economics, social, et cetera, in, in every different way. But I think as designers, we need to embrace those things and not forget and not only respond when um, there's a momentous event like that. We need to, we need to really truly change our profession. Yeah. Do you see that happening? I, I know there were a lot of promises made after George Floyd's murder um, and a momentum that was that was very present at that time. Is that momentum still still moving ahead? No, I, I think in I, I think it is. Yeah. I think it may have slowed down a little bit, uh, but I know that the the dialogue that at least I'm having with my colleagues and people in the profession, uh, there's a sustained commitment to this. And again, AA Minnesota is doing a great job of, of being at the forefront of some of these initiatives to, to make sure that this becomes not just a fad or a passing. And in the same way that I, our profession has been part of the leadership in sustainable design and development. And, and what we hope to happen is that sustainable design isn't thought of something that's separate. It's just part of the definition of good design. And equity isn't something that we have to think about. Oh, yeah, let's let's. We should think about equity too. Now that should be at, at the core found foundation of uh, of how we run our businesses, how we run our professional organization, and how we serve our clients. 
Yeah. Awesome. Are there any projects recently locally that you've worked on that really stand out to you that you've uh, been proud of? Any any work you've done around here? Well, going back to the story about how maybe why I'm an architect, uh, I was able to work on the Minneapolis American Indian Center expansion and renovation. Uh, I'm also the board president of the organization, so it's been really dear to my heart as I um, uh, have lived my life. It's been the core of our urban community. And it has, uh, over the years, just gone under, you know, it's it's almost a 50-year-old building, and it's had its challenges with maintenance and et cetera. And we've been working for the past 10 years to do community engagement and visioning, and we uh, finally started construction last month. And so now we're doing a major renovation and expansion of the facility. Um, and it's not really just about, you know, renovating the building, but it's about providing greater opportunity for our community to have access to services, to culture, to gathering, to um, um, provide economic uh, opportunities, uh, and to help revitalize the entire Native American community that, we, that we're living in. Yeah. What do you hope for from the future? Um, I hope, like you mentioned before, that some of these movements are sustained and that uh, the profession uh, eventually begins to uh, absorb them as just, again, part of the definition of good design. Um, I hope that design is, uh, is a valued uh, part of the way the world works. Sometimes it isn't, but I think as uh, architects and planners and designers and engineers, all the people who help uh, shape and form the, the environment uh, take leadership roles in in reimagining a future that isn't based on just uh, the status quo of what we did before, but that we're all hopeful for for uh, uh, a better world that we're working together to get to. I think that's the important thing, and and then to create the opportunities for the dialogues to happen, to have those discussions. And again, that's where AIA uh, has been a great resource for our community of professionals to have these discussions and to think about our responsibilities to make um, improvements in the world and the way we live. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Sam, I don't think I have any other questions. Anything you want to add that I didn't ask about? No, thank you for your interest and, yeah. uh, and feel free to reach out at any time. Um, but uh, thank you for the work you do as well. Of course. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Yeah. Thank you.